Hi everybody, and thanks for coming to the virtual version of my talk, Evidence for Discriminable Gays and Capuchin Monkeys. We see when we look across primates is that primate eyes are a whole lot more variable than their vision. The vision's all pretty similar, and yet eyes come in all different sizes and shapes and colors. And that sizes and shapes and colors, that's information. And so perhaps what's going on is that all of this variability in the morphology of the eyes is really variability in how much information is revealed by the animal's gaze. And so to test some of the ideas of this hypothesis, what we're going to look into today is whether first the gaze of a social primate species is one that its conspecifics can understand, two, whether the gaze of a primate species that hunts small animals, that hunts that's carnivorous, that's omnivorous, that hunts its prey, it, 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 it perhaps is restricting some of the gaze information that its prey might have access to and that its prey might use to make these fight or flight kinds of decisions or probably more appropriately the flee or not flee decisions. And finally, that primates that are preyed upon, which is I think all of them, um, might have a gaze that their predators can understand, that they can signal to their predators, this is now a risky predation attempt. You are not ambushing me. Don't go meet me. As it would happen, a tufted capuchin monkey is a pretty good model for all of these hypotheses. They live in these big social groups. They are hunters of small animals, little small mammals and small birds, and are hunted by some of the most visual predators there are, these raptors that have the best eyes in the animal kingdom. Capuchins are also kind of interesting because within their own species, they have multiple vision phenotypes that we can unpack. So to test some of these hypotheses without doing a whole bunch of behavioral work and a whole bunch of field work, what we can do is quantify the amount of gaze information that's sort of going out, quantify what gaze information is in a capuchin's eyes, and then also quantify how much of that information that's going out is actually being received and how it's being received by each of these other hypothetical species. So by each of the capuchin, the prey species, and the predator species. So for the first part of this, to estimate what kind of gaze information is signaled, there are really great techniques now for using digital photography for this. So we followed some standard in the field techniques for estimating color and for estimating luminance, so the lightness and the darknesses of an image um, using some of these digital photography techniques. So controlling as best we could for the potentially biasing effects of the conditions, differences in light levels, um, differences in software, and trying to get as objective of a measurement as we could get from these photos. And it wound up, excuse me, it wound up being 131 photos of 13 laboratory house capuchin monkeys. So what some of the photos look like, hopefully you'll be able to pause and look at all their cute little faces. Then for the second thing that we needed to quantify this, how the different excuse me, how the gaze information is being received by each of the different receivers, we really just need to be able to quantify three things. The acuity of that receiver, so for, for lack of a better word, the resolution of the animal's vision via comparison to like the resolution of your computer monitor. Um, how much ability do they have to discern lines, to discern contrasts, contours, the, the sharpness of the vision in addition to what colors the animal has access to and how sensitive it is to the lightness and the darkness of an image. So how effectively it's able to make contrasts on the basis of color or on the basis of luminance, it's lightness and darkness. If you have all of that for a receiver, which we do for each of our different hypothetical receivers, we can do a pretty good job of estimating how discriminable a set of colors would be, a set of visual information would be. And finally, put it all together in some cool models that are out there to estimate how discriminable that information would be. So we've accounted for the information as it would be seen by the different species. And what does that sort of sum to? What, what behaviorally could that species act on? So what these models put out is this measure called delta S. You can roughly interpret it the same way you would interpret a just noticeable difference from psychophysics research. The idea being that a really low delta S value that probably is not something that's discriminable. So this zero to three-ish range conservatively would be something that's right at a discrimination threshold or is not discriminable, whereas higher values suggest that probably that is a discrimination that a species could make. What we were doing to 
explore some of these gaze-related questions would be things like exploring the comparison between the sclera of the species and the iris of the species. So the white of the eye and the colored portion of the eye, or the pupil and the sclera, or the sclera and the skin, all these kinds of contrasts. If we see high delta S values for these contrasts, we would suspect that, that probably, there probably is sufficient visual information for this different receiver species to discriminate the capuchin's gaze. We thought that capuchins should be able to discriminate their conspecific species. That appears to be what we see. This is a noisy plot, but here we have distance on the x-axis and delta s on the y-axis. And what we can see for all of our different contrasts, pretty high values, values much higher than our uh, criterion threshold here of 3 delta s for many of these different contrasts on either a color-based, so this chromatic basis, or the luminance-based, the lightness and darkness-based achromatic contrast. Capuchins here, pretty good at discriminating capuchin gaze. The Coatamundi, the small birds, um, these prey species, really not so much. Maybe they could discriminate at very short distances, but really this is, I mean, these models are under ideal conditions. It's probably not something that these species can do. The eagle, of course, a pinnacle of vision, pretty effective at discriminating capuchin gaze. What we found was that the capuchin gaze was really advantageous to its ecology. It's discriminable to its conspecifics for these social functions. It's discriminable to a predator and not particularly discriminable to a prey. Our future research can clarify how these trends extend to other species, to other primates, whether it helps us account for this substantial variation across the gaze of different primates, across the, excuse me, the, the differences in eye color across the different primates as well as whether they actually use any of this information that we are suggesting they have access to. So is it evident in a capuchin's behavior that it can signal to its conspecifics or to other species in the ways that our modeling suggests? Thank you so much for listening.